Hello everyone, welcome to electrotherapy class. Today we'll be discussing about laser. The foundations of laser was first established by Albert Einstein in his theory which is called as quantum theory of radiation. So lasers can be used for various uh, reasons. Lasers can be used in optical disc devices, laser printers, DNA sequencing instruments or it also can be used for therapeutic purposes to enhance tissue healing. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Later we will try to understand what does this mean through the production of lasers. But for now you try to remember the abbreviation for laser that is L for light, A for amplification, S for stimulated, E for emission and R for radiation. Coming to properties of laser, it has three unique properties of laser compared to ordinary light. So laser is different from ordinary light. It has three unique properties. The first property is monochromaticity. So what does monochromaticity mean? Monochromaticity means only one single wavelength. The laser light has only one wavelength. Every light which comes out, every beam of light which comes out from laser device has only one wavelength. So therefore it is called as monochromaticity. If the laser beam emits a red light, that means it has only 694.3 nanometer of wavelength or also called as ruby laser. So monochromaticity means it has only one particular wavelength. Next unique property of laser compared to ordinary light is coherence. We have two types of coherence that is called as temporal which is all laser waves are in same phase and spatial coherence which is all laser wavelengths are in same direction. You can refer to this uh, second picture here where it is written coherent laser light above and incoherent LED light below. Coherent laser light you can see the pattern here all the laser beams are in same phase and towards the same direction. Whereas in second picture where it is written incoherent LED light all the lights all the beams which are coming out are monochromatic that is it has the same wavelength but it is not in same phase. You can see it is not in same phase, it is distorted. Therefore, the uh, second property of laser is called as coherence, where temporal coherence means laser waves are in same phase and spatial coherence means all the laser waves are in same direction. The third type of property of laser is called as collimation. Collimation means all the waves of the laser are parallel to each other. So the waves of laser which is released from the laser device which are monochromatic are made to travel parallel with the help of a lens. We discussed three properties of laser. First one was monochromaticity, second one was coherence and third one is collimation. This can be understood by these pictures here. Laser radiation is like a column of soldiers wearing same uniform which is monochromaticity all marching and stepping at the same time which is temporal coherence in the same direction which is spatial coherence and parallel to each other which is called as collimation whereas in second picture it can be understood as the property of ordinary visible light where ordinary visible lights are like a crowd of people all in different clothing, walking in different direction and out of step or no one is in phase or in same direction. Other properties of laser are similar to ordinary visible lights which are reflection, refraction, penetration and absorption which we already know from physics. LLLT which means low level laser therapy which ranges from 635 to 904 nanometer. This low level laser therapy can be used for 
therapeutic purpose which enhance tissue healing. Coming to types of low label laser and its production. First type is called as the ruby laser. Wavelength of ruby laser is 694.3 nanometer. So let's discuss how it is produced. In first picture you can see uh, a red beam or a red rod which has been wound around by a tube. So this red rod is called as ruby rod and it is wound around by a tube called as xenon flash tube. So this xenon flash tube is connected to the circuit. This xenon flash tube will give a intense flash of light which will excite the ruby molecules. Once the ruby molecules gets excited, it raises its electrons to higher level. This basic we know from physics that any molecule which gets excited, their electrons will move from one orbit to the higher orbits. So when the electrons move from the lower orbits to higher orbits and return back to the same orbit, it will be releasing a energy which is called as photon. So in this, the released energy will be having the wavelength of 694.3 nanometer. Now next point that we have to understand is the small synthetic ruby rod is made of aluminum oxide where both the ends of the rod are made flat and silvered. One end is totally reflecting and other is partially transparent. The electrons moving from the lower orbit to upper orbit and coming down to the lower orbit after that the photon was released that photon will be traveling to and fro into this rod exciting more and more molecules and emitting more photons so one part of the ruby rod is transparent therefore if 50 suppose 50 photons were released at least 20 photons will be moving out of the rod whereas 30 other photons will be moving to and fro and exciting more and more photons which is called as amplification. Again we will revise the uh, process or the production. First of all we have to understand the parts. It has two important parts. One is synthetic ruby rod made of aluminum oxide where one end of the rod is fully opaque whereas other is partially transparent. This ruby rod is wound around by a xenon flash tube which is connected to the circuit. This xenon flash tube will excite the ruby rod or you can say this xenon flash tube produces an intense flash of light which will excite the molecules inside the ruby rod. Excitement means the electrons of the lower level of the ruby molecules will move to higher level and again come down to the lower level during which the photon will be released because energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Therefore, the photon will be released which will move to and fro within the rod because one part is totally opaque and other part is partially transparent. So some of the lights will come out of the ruby rod whereas others will be moving to and fro and exciting more and more molecules which is called as amplification. Therefore, from this process we can understand the abbreviation of laser where light is being produced that is monochromatic light is being produced because of the amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Next type of laser is called as helium neon laser. The wavelength of this laser is 632.8 nanometer and the color is red. Here also the process or the procedure of releasing laser light is similar to ruby laser which is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. But the construction of this laser is it consists of long tube containing helium neon gas at low pressure surrounded by a gun tube. Flash gun tube will be exciting the helium neon gas molecules where the photons will be released which moves to and fro within this helium neon gas reservoir where you can see in the picture one end of the helium neon gas reservoir is opaque whereas other one is partially transparent therefore the same process of 
exciting more and more molecules and releasing more photons which is called as amplification will be occurring and uh, the partial transparent surface of this reservoir will be releasing the laser beams with the wavelength of 632.8 nanometer the third type of laser is called as diode laser these are kind of laser involving semiconductor material gallium aluminum arsenide so this laser is designed in such a way that n and p semiconductors are arranged in layers as shown in the diagram it has metallic layer and reflecting surface one of the reflecting surface is partially reflecting similar to other uh, laser a bias voltage across p and n junction is applied to the metallic layer and electric field is produced in this electrons are excited by application of suitable electrical potential and thereafter photon is emitted when electrons return to the ground level or its original level so that photon which has been released will, will further emit identical photons by exciting other molecules of this semiconductor then these photons together are emitted as a laser beam form partially reflecting surface that is the procedure of diet laser the procedure of uh, releasing laser from all these three types of laser is same but the material use differs in these three different lasers let us go through once again laser is a abbreviation for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation the first property of laser is monochromaticity that means only single wavelength second property is called as coherence which means they are in same phase and in same direction third property is called as collimation these three properties are unique for laser which are different from other ordinary lights some other properties of laser are reflection refraction penetration and absorption and the abbreviation for LLLT means it is low level laser therapy which ranges from 635 to 904 nanometer so there were different types of laser first one is called as the ruby laser which consists of small synthetic ruby rod made of aluminum oxide both ends of the rod are flat and one is fully opaque whereas other one is partially transparent helical xenon flash tube is wound around the ruby rod it gives a intense flash of light and excites the ruby molecule which raises the electrodes to higher level when falling from the excited level to ground level uh, energy is released with the wavelength of 694.3 nanometer and further this photon will excite other electrons or molecules of the ruby rod and then this process is rapidly accelerated and more and more photons are released therefore this process is called as stimulated emission of radiation another type of laser that we discussed was helium neon laser the wavelength is 632.8 nanometer kindly remember the wavelengths of each laser type it consists of a long tube containing helium neon gas at low pressure surrounded by a flash gun tube as described for ruby laser ruby laser had xenon flash tube this has flash gun tube then the excitement excitation of these atoms by flash gun leads to different energy levels between them giving off photons with the wavelength of 632.8 nanometer and the last one is called as diet laser where the semiconductor is used which is gallium aluminum arsenide gallium aluminum arsenide laser is designed in such a way that the n and p of this uh, semiconductors are arranged in layers as shown in the diagram it has metallic layer and reflecting surface one of the reflecting surface partially reflecting and the voltage across p and n junction is applied to the metallic layer which will excite the electron and same process will be followed 